good evening i'm dr rohan krishnan and you are watching the health perspective presented by the medical dialogues uh, in today's episode of health perspective we are going to cover about the future of obstetrics and gynecology with this episode focusing mainly on those doctors no those neat pg aspirants who have cleared their exam and are in a worry about which subject to take and which subject to leave uh the, should they focus on on the clinical sides and the, all their confusions we are trying to sort it out in a short and sweet version uh today we are going to discuss about the future of obstetrics and gynecology uh to discuss this topic with us i am honored to invite dr tripti sharan ma'am who is associate director uh, department of obstetrics and gynecology blk max hospital new delhi uh, she contributes regularly to books journals and has several publications to her credit she is also the sme elsewhere editor uh, to dges peer reviewer she is also a member of foxy sexual medicine committee active activist from women on doctors involved in several awareness drives and public campaigns uh, she is the recipient of the apj abdul kalam Ap appreciation award wonder fox in the most inspiring gynecologist by et a global youth icon award and inspirational woman featured by incredible women of india business manager for her work as a doctor and an author she is also the author of several best selling books and award winning poet a blogger a, com a columnist uh, a very a warm welcome to you ma'am you have so many uh, stars in your feather i'm glad to invite you here and i think that all of us will uh, uh, know a lot about you your books and obstetrics and gynecology today thank you so much rohan for your kind words and end of the day i'm just as simple a doctor as you are and we're all doing our bit so i'm sure we'll have uh, plenty of good discussion today i'm really looking forward to it uh coming directly to the topic ma'am uh today's hmm. era, uh if we compare the obstetrics and gynecology from past 10 years or 15 years how is that how is has it developed from that time to now and uh, uh, we have seen that for female doctors uh, it has been one of the top choices uh, from from at least uh, from as far as i know because my great grandfather were also doctors i'm the fourth generation doctor of my family so i know that obstetric and gynecology has always been uh, one of the preferred choice uh, for female doctors so what what is the trend now how is it going at present Rohan I will split what you said into you know small small segments you said preferred branch for female doctor so now going back you know around 25 years back when i was doing my you know mbbs and then i was going to select this branch well to me i was a first generation doctor i really did not know where i was heading into but then yes i used to go as intern in the gynae department as third year as final year and uh, i was always i always felt a part of the department probably becomes to me being a woman i really don't know but you ha everyone has an inclination second what i selfishly thought was that it was a super specialization i like you know in general medicine in general surgery in those days i mean till date we know that they always do some super specialization so pediatrics orthopedics gynae they were considered to be specialist jobs you know i mean uh, there were specialized branches not specialist jobs so that was one thing third which was uh, very important to me was that it was a mix of medical and uh, you know surgical branch like there are still some universities jo aapko sirf md dete hain and there are some universities like ours which give you ms and i was very mighty proud of it you know med ms was one degree i was very fascinated about so i like that and yes i was even in that stage i was as fascinated by medicine as i would be fascinated by doing a surgical job so it offered me both and third which was very important that our patients were very healthy patients there was no pathology that we dealt with i would be get little yuck at doing those you know dressings that you guys do in orthopedics in surgery there was not a pathology our women were not suffering even the gynae patients to an extent i'm not talking about cancers and all but they were uh, i mean there were healthy physiological problems it was never a pathology in majority cases and this was the only place in the hospital where there was celebration hospital mein koi celebrate karne nahi aata but this was one place where there would be parties there would be sweets and all that so on and on i was in love with the department i still am 
so i love my branch i tell even my juniors to take up the branch but yes i understand that over the years the scenario has totally changed it is now one of the most challenging branch and to your second part that you said the female doctor i would say this branch is more suitable to a male doctor and now you i mean if oh, you allow me to see it's a highly demanding branch i'm talking about obstetrics now obs and gynae themselves they are two different very different uh, branches in obstetrics the uh, emergencies are you know real genuine emergency in surgery you can still wait in many cases till morning here if you wait the baby is going to come out you know you have to rush so this means middle of the night you have to go out and you know obstetrics especially when you are doing a private practice where it is your own practice and you have to be there i'm not talking about even government hospitals in government hospitals you are on floor duty there'll be a maybe a junior consultant also there and if you need a senior you will send an ambulance and that ambulance will go and bring the doctor or maybe the doctor will come on her own whatever but in private practice the scenario is totally different you have to be there at 1 o'clock 2 o'clock if it is a stormy night rainy night if you have a patient you have to be there and that takes a lot of it gives a lot of strain i remember going out in delhi sometimes you don't have somebody at home and you have to go your husband might not be well may not be there there may be women who are alone so and uh, this road uh, roads are never that safe i remember on women's day reading on columns you know talking about call center girls who have to go in the middle of night and somebody has to drop that at least they are coming in a cab nobody talks about a young gynecologist who has to leave behind maybe a small 6 month old child at home alone with her maid and go at 1 o'clock drive and then come back at 4 o'clock i have had worst experiences on delhi roads so it is not a very safe branch it you know it strains you here especially a woman who is only a you know i won't never a full time doctor she is parts of her is a mother part of her is a wife part of her is a you know i mean there are so many roles a daughter a daughter in law there are multiple roles which are put on a mother that she many times happily carries some but sometimes by default carries so it is a very tough branch for women and they need lot of support otherwise they lag behind especially in obstetrics true completely i completely agree with this uh, one more thing uh, earlier as you said that be it orthopedics pediatrics and uh, uh, obg there were no super specialization at that yes. time even uh, during our mbbs days just 10 years back also we were taught that okay these are the end branches uh, but now what we see in delhi Uh, be it orthopedics, be it obstetrics and gynecology, or even pediatrics, the super specialization course are coming up day by day. The patients are also expecting a super specialist doctors. If uh, uh, if someone is having a gynec problem, they will not want to go to a, a, a particularly someone who is doing that kind of practice, gynec oncology or something like that. So what what are the trends at the moment now? Like five years from now, would would this super specialty be a concern that everyone should have should do it or everyone must do it i think everyone must do it because it is not only about employment opportunities it is also about honing your skills like when you are doing a pg you do not get to do so many surgeries now you are more about studying 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 not every place teaches you uh, or uh, you come out as an expert you know in doing that particular surgery in your senior residency you learn you know a lot of hysterectomies or the vaginal hysterectomies doing cesareans fearlessly as sr senior resident in delhi i am talking about metro because the practice in bigger cities is much different than the practice in the smaller cities even at my stage directly after they're doing their pg many of my friends they started running their nursing homes and they were doing well and here we were saying no 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 we have to do first sr shape you know we need to learn this we i don't know what is right or wrong but then every everybody circumstance is different everybody skill is different isn't it one has to be very confident in the work they do and in our metros what i am seeing is that even in the bigger hospital i'm not talking about your individual practice that you're doing at home you're allowed to do ivf you're allowed to see onco patients but in the bigger hospitals if there is a cancer patient they will go to the onco department if there is a ivf to be done it will go to the ivf department you will need a ivf lab you're not going to do it so you know you need to have that um, degree or let's say that specialization or that fellowship 
and somewhere along the line i believe that if you you have to decide after you are doing your pg where you know you are going to uh, you know live and practice so it is a little difficult for girls or for anybody because you never know where you are going to settle ultimately but then having a super specialization always helps you settling down much easier i mean that's what i think though even though it takes lot of time and these days in gynae there are so many now branches gynae oncology then you know high risk pregnancy then we have uh, ivf uh, in vitro fertilization techniques and everything and endoscopy also minimal invasive we have come up with and then I, I guess euro gynae so many i might be still missing out so there are lot of branches and uh, one good thing is that yes one can pursue the your field of interest like there are some who would not want to leave obstetrics so they would rather go for high risk pregnancy and fetal medicine also that has come up a huge way and you know if you try to you know sail too many boats you will sink so you have it's better to restrict your field that way you can grow also better uh if we come to the salary packages is there any difference in private sector if you are a super specialist or you have done mrc og uh, does the pay scale changes because in government sector everything remains same uh, your uh, super yes we also do not count but uh, what is the uh, scenario in the private sector especially See, in medical. private practice it is end of the day what do you are practicing how much you know you earn through your own practice salary is not something that is given to unless they really need you at a very top post or that they give you a salary package most of us earn through our patients jitna kaam karte ho utna you know you are earning so but yes if we talk at a junior level like pgs we have dnbs and there are dnbs and pgs in government we have senior resident in our hospital we have senior resident in government so the uh, i would say the salaries of our residents fellows they are much less than what is there in the government sector that is definitely there but the growth is sometimes growth in terms of salaries like in government they will start at maybe at 1.25 but it will end at around 3 in private there are no limits you as a fellow as a resident you might be getting maybe 80000 maybe as per experience if you are joining as a senior resident but you are much senior you have worked you have experience in the hospital needs you they might pay you maybe up till 1.5 also and beyond that once you get absorbed you can grow there in terms of financial uh, gains or if you have a skill you might get some um, might take you in the fetal medicine or in you know any super specialization and that way you can grow and climb the ladder but it is not that easy i mean there are good things and bad things about both earning money in private sector especially for a woman is not that easy i think that there 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 are a lot of hard work required uh, in private yes. sector if you are giving 100% in government sector you require 120% in private sector or to earn the same reputation yes uh, no one nobody wants to give you money in today's world i mean it is a rule that is in every private be it health sector or any sector nobody would want to pay everybody is there to extract maximum things from you so earning on your own is always more difficult rather than working peacefully in a government hospital maybe getting a little less so there is a financial stability here there is a financial growth that's the difference uh, one more thing uh, is about the medical legal cases in obg it has been increasing what are uh, yes. the present guidelines of ivf can ms obg can do ivf and how how much uh, is that change in past 10 years the medical legal cases which are increasing in obg as well see uh, obstetrics that way is one branch which is very unpredictable right and uh, most of the complications cannot be predicted in uh, obstetrics everything is going well suddenly there will be some you know adverse uh, problem so the acceptance of people is also not good because here they have come to celebrate something and suddenly you know you face a tragedy so there can be uh, you know spontaneous reactions and all that and nobody likes to accept an adverse reaction let's accept that 
So the legal consequences are also maximum in obstetrics department. Nobody accepts if during delivery something goes wrong with the baby or with the mother. If there is a baby who has birth asphyxia problem, nobody will see how much of the problem could not be prevented. Ultimately, everything that goes wrong is on the doctor's head. Right? Nobody will say that they were not having antenatal checkups. And I've seen patients who have refused for a cesarean, went on with a normal delivery, ended up having a asphyxiated baby, still went and, you know, sued the doctor. So that way things are there. And um, regarding how much we have changed, I would say when my when I was a PG, we used to write on our patient, then hum apna pet kaat kar bacha nikalwane ka operation karwane ko tayar and here is stamp and we would, you know, have impression and we would take up the patient. And now we have a legal contract, you know, it's almost 10 page booklet, informed consent. First, you have to, one copy has to be given to the patient. They have to sign on every paper like, a, you know, a, 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 what do we call it? As if you're doing a, some land deal or buying a property, every page has to be signed. There have to be two witnesses. So things have changed quite a lot. These are the changing types. I would not say it is a patient's fault or a doctor's fault. Things have moved. Now we, people are also very aware. So they need to be told everything. So the legal consequences as a doctor, even we have to protect ourselves. And there has to be a proof of everything that we have told them. And in a department like ours, which is a very rapid paced department, one has to put so many notes, so many documentation. So most of the times, our interns and our PGs, they are really pissed off. But there's no end to it. We have somebody has to do it. So documentation is one thing. History taking is one thing. I would, I'm very proud to say that we gynecologists are much better than any other specialty because we are doing it a lot. True. And you have to take the entire history of the first trimester, second trimester. Yeah, I mean, there's too much history taking. You cannot afford to miss it. That is true. Though, I mean, one cannot miss in any other branch, but here it becomes a little different. Uh, here it, it holds a lot of more relevance because yeah. if someone has a fractured bone, his previous history of when was there uh, uh, a fracture is not that of relevant because uh, there's fresh injury, fresh wound trauma patient. So... Obviously, in obstetrics and gynecology, it becomes important. Uh, yeah. Coming to the first, uh, the topic of the subject, you yourself is an author. Tell our viewers something about your books uh, and uh, uh, where can we, the viewers, can see that book and where can we, what is uh, what is the book all about and uh, uh, what inspired you to write a book? Like, we don't see doctors writing books. Uh, uh, I mean, that's a stereotype, I would say. <laughs> Doctors but, but, are very sensitive people. And, but uh, I, 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 I don't recognize much of medicos writing books. I think that okay. there are very few. Uh, and you are one of those gems. So uh, you are being modest, modest, but still, I think that it is something really uh, fascinating. So please tell us about that. See, I think medicine is, uh, you know, one branch that gives you a lot of uh, experience lot of sensitivity, lot of, lot of, it teaches you a lot of compassion and empathy. And if you have that eye to see, we all have a lot of stories, you know, dealing with patients. We deal with a diverse situation and we see people in their most vulnerable moments. And you will agree that these moments are very revealing. They tell you a lot. You see a full family and immediately you will understand what's going right or what's going wrong there, isn't it? We we can understand because people don't hide in those moments. So coming to, I mean, this is what medical profession has taught me. And uh, coming back to how I started writing, I think uh, language is something that you develop by, you know, when you're in school. And I was blessed to have a lot of people, almost everyone in my family reads and writes as a lot of music and literature in my family. So that way I grew up in that environment, went into medicine for a time, got totally, you know, bogged by studies and then, you know, having children, raising them up and establishing my career. And in between, you know, I dealt with a lot of problems at home diseases and I had my problems with my mom and she had CKD. And then around, uh, I think this was about 10 years back that I lost her. But uh, we struggled a lot for 10, 15 years. I had young children and a lot of other medical problems in my family, which I don't want to specify. But those moments, they taught me a lot, you know. And uh, once 
when I lost my mother, especially writing became very therapeutic to me. And I started writing quite a lot. That was the time when I actually uh, was writing voraciously and furiously, I would say. So then I came across several uh, literary forums. I became part of it. Initially, I was, I don't think I was good at all. One of the, poll, there was a comment on it that, why are you writing here, you know? Social media can be very bad also. And I said that if you don't want to read, please don't read. So this guy writes that, no, if you are writing there, it is your responsibility. You have to write good. So I have faced these kind of comments also. But then I grew up, I, I would say. Initially, when I look back, I would say that, that that person was not entirely wrong also. So then I improved. The more I wrote, the more I improved. And I think around 2015 or something, I came up with my first uh, poetry anthology with a group of poets. And then soon I was uh, had another one, The Dew Drops. And then uh, there was, I wanted to be an author because, you know, as poetry, a poet is different. An author is the one who writes, you know, prose. That's how we call them. So poetry people don't read much. Even the publishers don't want publish it, to publish it much. So I wrote my first book, Chronicles of a Gynecologist. So I did not have to go to any literary agent. I, I, fortunately, I didn't have to struggle much. Being a doctor, I guess, helped me there. So these people, Bloomsbury people, say, came up to me and they wanted to publish this book. And I would say it's one of my most class book, you know, Chronicles of a Gynecologist. Would be happy to just a moment. This one. Can you see this? Yes, so this yes. was published by Bloomsbury. It is a collection of stories of my experiences with uh, the different women, their stories that, uh, I mean, who come to my clinic. And it was everything from, uh, you know, everything, superstitions, pregnancies, all that ails a woman, unsafe abortions, teenage pregnancies, incest, rape, because we used to do a lot of medical legal also. And they were very interesting stories. So uh, it, it's what like, you know, aapki jo ek bhadas nikalti, itne saalon ki andar dabi hoti, when you see the social uh, injustice given out to women. So it is a reflection of that to me as a woman, of all that I had seen. So that was my first book and it was praised by Times of India. And there was some noted feminist who said that they felt that they had seen everything. But when they read the book, they found it gut-wrenching. So... But that was about me as a gynecologist. And you would agree that our UG and PG days, somehow they define us. And we can never get out of that. Even if you, you know, you can grow old as a doctor, but you can never forget your uh, undergraduation days or your post-graduation days. So that part of me was still inside me. And that's how I came up with my next book. That was House of Doctors. It's a very beautiful book. It is everything, everything that you can think happens in the inside um, hospital during those days. It is. It, uh, it has comedy. It has tragedy. It has love affairs. It has sarcasm. How we treat sometimes our professors, our seniors, our juniors. Everything that happens in those hospital corridors. So that was it. And then I love reading mythology. So I came up with another book that is Being Radha. So that is uh, Radha talking to Krishna, telling her side of story. And it's not Radha, it's a modern 20th century woman, you know, questioning Krishna that if he thinks he was born for a purpose in life, then who is not born with a purpose in life? Everybody has a purpose. And not all wars are fought in Kurukshetra. That was my blurb about it. And I was fascinated by Radha because she was not the traditional, you know, Mother, the role, she's not worshipped in that role of mother. She's a Bal Sakhi. She fights with Krishna. She make, uh, she dresses up for Krishna. She runs away from her, sneaks out of her home um, with Krishna. So I found these things very fascinating. Okay. She's okay. older than Krishna, married, you know, to another person. So I used to think how people accept, how could, you know, People accept this aspect of a woman and still uh, celebrate her. So that is how I read a lot about her. And I came up with this book, Being Radha. So Being Radha is also uh, written by you. Yeah. Being Radha beyond her love and his Leela. This would be, I think it's here. Can you see this one? The rest uh, of the two, I, I knew about that, them. but I Anecdotes and antidotes, I just came... Uh, Recently, last year, yeah. it is yeah. also a collection of stories about me as a mother, me as a wife, 
me as a doctor during covid times it has lot of stories me as a doctor also so it has different uh, you know uh, what do we say traces of different aspects of my own personality i would say but then anyone can any woman can relate with any man can also relate with those stories so that was it perfect i'll recommend our viewers to view this uh, book as well uh, apart from this show because uh, it is written by a gynecologist and uh, it has so many experience i completely agree that during uh, a period a doctor has a lot of uh, interaction yes. with the people the general public and uh, those interactions tells us a lot about their families and what is happening in 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 the minds of the patient and the people so uh, i think that uh, these experiences are worthwhile sharing and uh, hope one day I, i also write a book if i get ah, if you're I most welcome <laughs> uh thank you so much ma'am for giving your time uh, it, it was wonderful having you here i think our viewers will uh, get a lot from this show thanks so much ma'am thank you so much rohan thank you for having me here never miss a medical update from medical dialogues like subscribe and press the bell icon